just saying how cute that puss looks laying at my feet right now. Well, she's laying at my feet. She's equally distanced. Me. No. If you if we were to measure right now, she's probably about a little less than a foot away from my foot. I'm not going to fight about this. It's not a fight. It sounds like it is because you wanted to make sure you, you measured it. Them be the facts. Bethany. Bethany. And Sean. And Sean. We are a couple of nuts. Talking. You, you measured the distance. I can touch her just like this. So Boop. can I look. Boop. Yeah, you would get to reach much no, further. No, I don't. Oh, boy. Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Hey, nuts. Welcome to a couple of nuts talking. Hey, nuts. Well, we're a few episodes deep now, so um, we're guessing that you've been listening to us and you're listening to this this latest episode. And we're just going to do a, a quick shout out to give us a review. Subscribe oh, to please us. Please give us share. a review. Share. If you're laughing, if you're enjoying this, if this makes you fall asleep, all of those things are all three good. Even if you think this is the worst podcast ever, tell somebody, say, dude, you got to check out the worst, worst podcast, podcast ever. Ever. Listen to these nuts. These nuts. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Listen to them go. Like they're just going. Am I right? Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, geez. <sighs> so much to talk about in so little time. Right? I mean, I bet you think, like, I can't wait to see what they're going to talk about today. Yeah. Because we come up with some, like, crazy nutty things. It's so true. And I think that we're uh, amazing. Yeah. We're like, if they made purple pistachio nuts, we'd be those. I don't get it. Like, you can't find them. They're so unique. It, there's only probably two that are oh, in the world. Okay. Then that would be us. That may not have been the best analogy. Hey. No. Oh, here she goes. Oh, Give it Boom. Oh. Bam. That's how you do it. It's <laughs> just no one at home knows what we're talking about, but our cat started playing with one of our cords. People get it. People with pets, they play with stuff that you don't want them to play with, and sometimes you got to give them a little foot. And there was no force behind the foot. With cats, the great thing is, our cats especially, because they're so skittish, I just got to barely touch her, and bam, she's, she's off. off. Yep. She's off and running. You know what's interesting? This is us. This is literally us, all right? Uh, so one of the, I mean... This is us, and on a side note, this is us makes me cry every single time. The we TV watch show it. you're talking the about, the television show. This is us. I cannot help it. If it's the music, it's the acting. That acoustic. That it's like I, Nick Drake. It's just incredible. It's so good. It's. I mean, every time they hit a minor, I'm just like, that's it. I'm gonna lose my my water juice in my eyes. It's so sh it's it's so beautiful. Every episode, and you know what? Every episode, we're like, we're not gonna cry this time. Yeah. What could they possibly pull out of the hat? And they sure enough, Kleenex to the rescue. Boom. I mean, all they have to do, they could have the family go into a McDonald's and have a quick memory and look over and say, "Dad would have liked this." Bim, boom, bim, boom. Tears. Tears, because we both barely have dads. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not go there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Because they might listen to this. That's true. Of course they will. Love you guys. Oh, jeez. We just never see you. We just never um, see you. Anyways, so this is us. This is a, w another segment that we have where we're just going to talk about us. We hope that someone relates to it, and we'd love to know if you guys do this too. So as you know, we have two cats, and two cats. they are our lives. And we went to Bed Bath & Beyond because we actually needed – some important things for our kitchen. Like it was just well overdue that we needed a lemon strainer. Is that what you call it? Like a yeah, lemon squisher? Uh, a citrus squeezer. We needed a dish rack. We needed a frying pan. We needed like essential f amazing things. First thing I do when I walk in is see the pet section that they have up front. It's like they know. It is. It's like they set it up before. Like right when you hit the threshold, right when you Get in the door right there to the right. No human shit. It's just 
dog and cat stuff. And it's adorable, and none of it's on sale, and it's wa- way overpriced. Probably the most expensive stuff there. It was the most expensive stuff that we bought that was completely unnecessary. Yeah. And anyways, we ended up shopping in that section the longest that we were there. Probably like 15, 20 minutes. That took the most uh, like decision making. Because should we get them this tube to (laughs) crawl through and live in? Or should we get them this windowsill perch that they can just stare out at the birds all day? No, it was a decision because Puss would enjoy the tunnel. Right. And Cookie, I knew, would enjoy the sill. But would they both enjoy both? So I I... Threw it to the wind, and I thought, you know what? They're both going to enjoy this windowsill thing. Now, we were gone. We went, we had to, to travel. And so, of course, I had to buy something for them because I felt bad for being gone. Like, I would be that parent. I'd be, I'd have the awful kid who's spoiled. Whenever I'd go do something, I'd have to, like, compensate with material yeah. goods. So That's what I was taught. Quick interjection. The cat's run our lives so much that we went to Illinois to visit Bethany's family, okay? And we had to split up when we left. So Bethany was gone for about 10 days, and then I had to wait a few days because we didn't want to leave the cats alone (laughs) for so long. So I, I waited like four or five days after she left to head out there, and then I only got to spend like five days out there. But That's how much they run our lives. Yeah, it's all for the cats. There was one other time when we went out to Illinois. Oh, yeah. And the stay got a little, we drove out there, so the stay got a little extended. I had to fly home in mm-hmm. the middle of the stay, so I had to buy a plane ticket to fly home to make sure the cats were okay, and I spent and then a day or two with them, and then I had flew to fly back. back out to Illinois, and then we drove back to L.A., all for the cat. Do you know what I think of when you say that now out of context? Like out of, you know, not out of context, but out of that moment. What? What a waste of fucking money. What a waste of oh money. Oh, my God. We spend so much money. It's not a waste because we love them. I mean, yeah, it it matters. But that was like a few hundred dollars in plane tickets. Every time. And I really jacked my back up, too. So I ended up having to go to chiropractor. So that costed money. And it's just, you know, looking. But. Oh, there's Cookie. Cookie. She knows we're talking about it. Hear that, but um, so here's the thing: we stood at Bed Bath and Beyond, t- holding both of these items. Yeah. I mean, talking about it like it was the most important thing. We had just gotten home, that like after days and days, we have so much shit to do when we come home, and this is what the gravity pulled us towards what like are they gonna like are they gonna like this? are they gonna how like are we gonna do this is this gonna work for them not not even us and like, it was both of them by the way way too expensive but we still got it anyways we and then we got home okay so we ended up getting the window so we get home the next two days today and yesterday we put it up and the whole time we're like is this going to break on them? Are they going to get hurt? Is this safe? I mean, every time they went near it or touched the windowsill, we were watching yeah. uh, it just intently. Stressful. Sometimes I would stand up because I thought it was going to flip out, yeah. like flip over. I mean, it was oh, stressful. it's exhausting being cat parents. And that's, I mean, that's us. You know, This is us. This is what we do. That's what we do. We live for our cats. Yeah. And. I'm not mad at it. No. I like, just, I complain about it, but it's... I mean... And then w- they come and join us for the podcast because they're like, you guys are talking about us, meow. We should probably get them little microphones. I'm... Yes. The answer is yes. I'll get them little lobs little so we can attach it so wherever they, they go. It. Oh, that'd be so cute. That would be adorable. We already have some pictures. We would also love your way in Do you want us to be on video? I mean, we. I feel like it'll slow us down a little because it's a lot... like. We have to edit then, and it's got video involved. We can't just, we both just showered, and we have wet hair. We have, like, n- pajamas on. Yeah, yep. So we would lose that luxury, but if this is something, or maybe we could just take pictures while we do it and put those up. I don't. I mean, if we do, like, a YouTube link, yeah, then we could uh, maybe do photos pop up when we talk about stuff. But I don't know. Give us ideas, guys. Help us out. Comment. Let us know. We are all for you guys. We're for our cats first, and then you guys are second. So right, right, right. Of course. So there's that. Um, yeah. When we were in Illinois, 
I thought this is funny. We were in Illinois, and Bethany's mom needed some gardening stuff done. Oh, this is true. So, of course, being the amazing kids that we are, um, we did some gardening for We do whatever she asks. And, you know, I I think right towards the end of the gardening, uh, we kind of were like, God damn, we're good at this. I mean, damn, son, we're good at gardening. We nailed it. Like, she just threw out some instructions. Yeah. But then we took the bull by the horn. We picked up the little thing that waters. Yeah. And and the fertilizer junk that we needed to measure out. Yep. And then she pointed to the bushes that we needed to do it for. Fucking perfection. She said it usually takes her a day. A like that's day. her daily chore and we knocked that shit out in like twenty twenty five minutes. Twenty twenty five minutes. And then I also had to do some prunings, which by the way, caught my mom. Yeah. Because I noticed some buds forming on the things that she wanted so me to prune. These she's been killing these plants. So I to the rescue, green thumb bee yeah. comes in from outside to my mom. Hey Ma. I don't think you should prune these. I'm going to stop. Ma. Ma. You're pruning the hedges and they're growing buds. They got buds growing out of them, Ma. So I took a pic and I showed her and she's like, oh, God. She's like, yeah, just leave them. Don't do it. And I said, done. Handled. And she did it. Again, another project that takes her a day. Nailed. Uh, And then I did have to weed one of them because there was like these grass things coming through. And I just grabbed. Now, that one hurt. I didn't do really well on that. Yeah. But I figured that we nailed the other two so quickly. Yeah. That I just was like, you know what? One plant with some grass in it. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. It'll be fine. So we're thinking about a couple of nuts gardening. Gardening. Okay. You see what we're doing here? We started, this whole journey started with a couple of nuts cooking. Okay, that was a cooking show that we have. It's on YouTube. Go ahead Please and search, go watch it. Search it on YouTube. It's on my Facebook too. Cooking. It's also on Bethany Dwyer's channel on YouTube and Facebook. Not for nothing. It took off on Facebook. Yeah, it did. And a then lot we more. put it just so you guys know when you're on YouTube and you're like, Why are there so little hits? It's because we put everything up on Facebook and we're getting all these wonderful numbers and then and then we did it to YouTube. Well, I guess, you know, and this isn't a dig on our family or friends, but I guess you have to put forth a little more effort to go watch it on YouTube. And I guess maybe people don't want to do that. They don't want to click the link. And I guess I kind of understand that because it does take a little extra work of the finger. But but we even did a how-to click how to go on YouTube and, and watch go, and right. how to like and how to hit the thumbs up. We did a couple of thing. nuts tutorial. Yes. Which maybe maybe that didn't work because it wasn't an ing. Because oh, we, we tend to do we should have done tutorialing. <laughs> Damn it. I know. From now on we will add ing to everything. So a couple of nuts cooking cooking show. A couple of nuts talking this podcast that you're listening to right now. Next venture a couple of nuts gardening. gardening. Keep your eyes out. You're going to have us uh, green thumbing all over the world. Yeah. So stay tuned, everybody. Ooh, a quick, quick other thing. Mom had me, she wanted me to replant one of her trees in her uh, dining room. And I went in and I stuck my f- finger in the soil and found mites. 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 So... I have I even got the mite killer and and treated our whole soil. She sure did. Oh, can I interject here? Yeah. Okay, so we had to go back to the uh Oh yes, yeah, a good story. We had to go back to the nursery. Is that what they're called? Yeah, Alsip Nursery. We had to go back to the nursery to get the mite killer. And let me tell you what, by the way, in the Midwest, this place was banging. Booming. This place, the, the parking lot was full. B- there was. B- banging. A hundred cars in there. I mean, At coming least. and going. And there was just, it was. The, it line was, after line after line. It looked like a Costco on a Saturday, but it was just on a the nursery. Outside. Uh, on the outside. On the outside. On the inside. Doesn't look anything like Costco. It was just a nursery. So they sell all the stuff that you sell at a nursery. And there's even, there's pets, there's rescue animals there too. By nursery, we mean plants. Plants. Dirt, pots, soil, anything to do with gardening. pots, gardening, gnomes, things like that. 
But they are, they do have other weird random like tchotchkes as well. That's what I'm talking yeah. about right now. And that's where I'm going with this. So we're waiting in line. And there's tons of families there, obviously. And there's this family in front of me. And uh, a mom, a dad, and a little son, a little boy. They don't have anything in their hands, you know. And I'm watching, of course, because that's what I do. I watch everybody all the time. And so I see the mom and dad, nothing in their hands. I'm like, what? Are, what why are they even standing in line? I look down at the boy, the, the little son. He has this little stuffed animal of a, dur- a Dorito bag. Of a Dorito. What What Dorito exec it's was like, I don't, what's next? What's next for Doritos? Oh, I know. A stuffed Dorito bag. An an- stuffed, is that what you would call a stuffed, stuffed animal Dorito bag? Like a, a, a plush pillow. Toy. It was like a plush, a plush. But it was like a, the size, it was tiny. It was the size of a Dorito bag. Oh, really? Like a snack size? It was legit the or size the- of a tiny little Dorito bag. Like a little snack size. I'm sorry, Dorito I missed bag. that. It was adorable and it was hilarious seeing that the little little kid was walking up and then he put it up on the counter. I think the mom even gave him the money to pay for it. But just so you know, guys, the lines were incredibly long. The line long. was so long, so they so waited. So this family waited in line. Amazing. First of all, didn't need any plant shit. Nothing. Didn't need a tchotchke. Like a hard tchotchke knickknack. Nothing. Didn't need dirt, plants, potted soil, none of this. They went in going, you know what? I'm looking for a chip bag that's soft. Yeah, I'm looking for a (laughs) plush toy of a Dorito bag. Of a Dorito bag. (laughs) I'm looking for a snack that's soft and yeah. i can't really eat there it got the accent because it's from illinois i can't do it that well but it's like who in their right mind would I be like you know that. what i didn't even see any of those types I didn't of either. things there. i would have had i i would have gotten out of line and been like let me see what else we got fritos we I got ruffles what do we got cheetos yeah. like what's who does it run the gamut or is it strictly just doritos what do you think this kid's doing with that little plush Dorito toy? I think he p- rests his head and goes to bed thinking, mm, Cool Ranch. Yeah. Oh. Why? Maybe. I like Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch is, I like, I like the spicy nacho. But he, I was thinking, yeah, when I was a kid, I liked little things like that. So I would have totally used that as a pillow and be like, this is my new pillow. Right. Look at me. I'm laying on Doritos. Look at this Dorito bag pillow. Who wants a snack? Ha <laughs> ha. It's just pillow. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was the sweetest and... One of the funniest things I saw. And one of the biggest waste of time. I mean, they had to wait in that line for at least 10 minutes. Just at least. Are that. you kidding? At I feel least. Like I'm at saying least. at least 10 minutes. Ay, ay, ay. But, but God bless them. God yeah, bless yeah. that family. Wow. I mean, look, that Dorito exec was right. It worked. It Nailed sold. It. <laughs> and now this family, every time they have any reunion or any type of get together, Dorito has a free sponsor, like a free commercial ad. Yeah. At this person's house. Yep. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So you that was the mites. I interjected. I don't know if you had anything more on top of the mites. and the Just that I annihilated the mites. Yeah. I fertilized and Oh, we should text treated. your mom and see. Yes. Well, it said it, she's got to do it for three months straight. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So I, I accomplished the first month of what needed to be done. Yeah. But then... uh thereafter ev- uh, every two months for six so a total of six months will have passed so by the ne- next time we go out there we'll be transferring i will be the transferring tree. the tree yes so i told we, her we well you'll ho- we, you'll lift the pot for me yes because it's a couple of nuts gardening correct and and like my my mom was the one w- who said why haven't you guys been filming yourself doing this well, first she said, oh, you guys th- thinking up another idea, huh? Oh, she was kind of mocking us a little bit when we said, oh, my God. You guys are full of ideas. Yeah, but it yeah. was like in a very like kind of condescending. Of course, she thinks way. I'm never going to make it. Right. Perhaps she's right. Yeah. And now um, she has another one to pick on. now. Yes. Yes. We so. are the same. So she loves that she's got an audience now for the picking ons. Yeah. Um, well, no, me too. I'm saying. Now she has an audience, so whether she's picking on you and I'm the audience, or oh, she's right. picking on me and you're the audience, she's got somebody to do the old well, this elbow time hit. She's picking on us. Yeah. Well, I think because we do a lot of the same thing. I was gonna say this. So another really great thing about the trip that happened. Um, 
that made me really happy. And I was surprised it made me happy because it was an activity that actually was active, right? Yeah. Um, so usually I'm not a fan of the active activities. Right. Um, this one was, my mom was like, hey, uh, when you come out here, you want to play pickleball with me? Pickleball. Pickleball. And I was like, um, yes. I was just like, right. it's just like their Dorito soft plush toy. Yeah. I was like, what is this deliciousness of a pickle? I don't know what it is. Doing but in. in a ball. Yeah. And I got to see what happens and what's going on. So I was like, absolutely. And then, of course, I was like, what do I wear to pickleball? Yeah. Um, and she just said some leisure wear. Right. So I nailed that. I wore some jogging pants and a uh, sports bra. Real nice. Because my boobs are the least athletic part of my body. Right. I put on a sports bra. Yeah. Uh, just to up the game, make sure my whole body is an equal. Yeah. In the sport game. Uh, anyways, I get there and uh, my mom's an older woman and she's got her five older women friends that she goes and plays pickleball with. And not for nothing, I was the best player and I had never played. I believe that. I was like the Venus Williams of Orland Park. And uh, I... I believe that. Oh, man. I Because I, I don't want to toot my own horn. I wish I had the coach here because we had a coach. We had a lessons guy. I, pick you, I, I peg you more of a Martina Navratilova. Thank you. Of pickleball. <gasps> yes. You he said, her? I do. Or He's maybe a Steffi Graf. I almost said Steffi Graf, yeah. and then I was like, is that volleyball or I tennis? I think you're more Steffi graf Yeah, yeah. I think so, Steffi Bethy, you know? Yeah. I'll never go by Bethy, but it does have a thing to it. Uh, but listen, so I get there, right? I'm a little nervous. I'm like, ooh, I got to... I got to pull first of all, because it's COVID, you know, I haven't moved too much. So where where do you go from there? Or been in really groups of people and been in groups of people. Correct. So uh, quite liberating. Uh, so anyways, we get to pickleball court. Like I said, f five or six older ladies. Uh, and I'm not going to brag. I'm just telling you straight up facts. The coach was like, hey, Bethany, you've never played this. And I was like. No, never yeah. heard of it. Never played. He it. couldn't believe it. He, he thought couldn't you were believe a pro it. Pickleballer. He said at the end, he goes, "You're the best person I've ever coached on the first time." Wow. You, he's like hands down by far. What was the coach's name? I can't remember. Damn it. I know. I'll try and think. I'll ask my mom. All I right. could text her. Yeah. Want me text her? Yeah. Get the coach's name. Yeah. Maybe we can have the coach on real quick. Yeah. And he can tell you guys. Oh, my God, that'd be so funny. Let's talk. Let's get the uh, pickleball coach. We're going to get the pickleball coach because I want you to hear it from the source, guys. Um, oh, hold on. Text your mom. And oh, God. Yeah, so I didn't get to partake in the pickleball because you were taking care of the cats. I was at home taking care of the cats. I had to deal with Cookie. She gets very depressed when Mama leaves. Puss actually really took a liking to me. I think she imprinted more so on me than she right. had. Before, I mean, she's literally laying here staring at me Both as we speak. Uh, she's asleep. Her eyes are closed. But nice her try. Oh, nope. There it is. See, her face is, oh, yeah, directly at me. She is obsessed with me. Uh, Hold on. I'm just writing to my mom right now to get that coach name. Um, Okay. So, anyways, he said, uh, you're the best. Then, when everyone was done, he was like, you should compete. They have tournaments, and he's like, you would do quite well. He's like, I really hope that you don't stop playing. And I was like, done. And then I get to L.A., and L.A. does not have any pickleball. Like, heartbroken. Pickle broken. Yeah. I even found on the way home, do you remember? We saw the guy with the pickleball shirt, and yeah. I, I asked him to take a picture, and he this let me. A, this pickleball thing is like a thing. It's a thing. I am so excited about because I was really good at something, from the get-go. Now, here I'll tell you another little thing about pickleball that happened. So, I'm playing, right? It's a good two hours that we're playing. It's It starts at like 1 or 1.30. I can't remember. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was in for. 
I mean, I ate breakfast and, a, and I ate some snacks before I went. These ladies go hard. Uh, and the coach had me practicing and doing all this stuff. And I am playing so hard and I'm never the one who gets to be out. So they rotate, right? So these ladies keep rotating. Did you burp? It smells weird. It smelled yeah, like Italian burp. food. Do you smell that? Well, it's probably one of our neighbors cooking. Yeah, it smells like sausage. Jesus. Uh, ugh. Do you, you don't smell it? Here. No, I just put I just put deodorant on. I know. So I thought smell. that's what your deodorant smelled like for a second. I took yeah. a whiff and I was like, "What is Mario Luigi doing in here?" Wow. Um, okay. Super Mario Bros. Deodorant. Yeah. So I was like, so back to pickleball. I I am never out. I'm playing hard the whole time. Oh, yeah. I smell it. Yeah. And these ladies, most of them are over 65. All right. I'm just going to give it away. They're over 65. Yeah. So I'm fucking running all which ways. One of them has a bum knee. Guess who coach puts me with? The bum knee oh lady. God. Who, by the way, is the sweetest pie. Yeah. But she already says when she's playing, she's like, I, I, I ain't going for nothing. So no matter what, so if you, you had don't, to pick up the slack. I had to pickleball that slack, and I was running like crazy. So the coach says at three, "Hey, it's over, but feel free to keep playing because you got. I already paid for you guys." Wow. I sit down and I go, "You know what? I'm so tired. I'm so hungry, guys. What a great game!" And all these fucking ladies are like, "Yeah." Let's play again. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And I was like, Pickleball. I was hunched over. Yeah. I was hunched over, dizzy, being like, and my mom's there, guys. And I literally look at her. I'm hunched over and dizzy. And I'm like, Mom, I'm so hungry. I don't know if I can wow. play anymore. And she was like, um, Bethany, you and Jackie, you're on the scene. And I was just like, oh, my God. So then I start throwing the game. Wow. I legit just fucking let balls go by. And guess what? They have no idea because they're constantly letting balls go right, by. Right, right. So I just look like one of them. Yeah. And I, oh man. And I, at the end, I was like, Ma, I was like about to pass out. I'm your daughter. And she's like, well, yeah. once we're in the game, we're in the game, darling. That and I was is like, funny. Oh, my God. I bet God. after you left, I bet Jackie and Barbara are like, oh, jo Joanne's daughter She's a real pussy. She couldn't even hang with the big girls. Right? Yeah. This wonderful lady named Jackie. Welcome to Pickleball, bitch. She was the only one, the only one out of these five ladies where she was like, I got some yogurt pretzels. Did you want some? And I was like, yeah, I, was like, yeah, I, I do. Love that. I know. So she gave me two yogurt pretzels. Um, and that was it. Hey, baby. Yeah. Babe, knock, knock. Who's there? Pickleball, bitch. That's Barb in your f and then in your face. Yeah. Because Barb can outlast you in pickleball. Yeah. Welcome to pickleball, bitch. <laughs> can you deal with it? Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, so that's enough. But I am. I'm a. I. You're a pickleball. You're I'm a pickleball a head. Pickleball head. I'm an addict, and I can't even play it. Like I am. I, I still don't know what it is. And I she's thought tried about to, it every day. She's explained it to me numerous times, and I still have no idea what pickleball Ooh, is. Oh, mom just answered. Oh, of course that's his name. Mom just answered Gene Smith. Yeah, I think it's Smythe. There's a Y in it. Oh, I don't. Is that how you pronounce it? Then so Gene Smythe. Coach Smythe on Coach pickleball. Smythe. Oh my God, that's genius. Yeah. Are we creating a new movie like dodgeball but pickleball? Yes, pickleball. I that I immediately thought that when on the court, oh. I said. I'm going to write a tournament about now. No one will buy it because it's going to be about older people. Guys, I write I write lots of ideas that are not inclusive of teens and under 25. Can you get Coach Smythe's number? Uh, can we? Of interview course, him? I can. Do you think he's knowledgeable on like the history of pickleball and no, stuff? No, I literally asked him so many questions. He had no idea. Like, why is it called kitchen? He doesn't know. And also during the game. Damn, let me tell you something what? though. You if you type in in the yeah. search engine pickle, all you need to do is do pickle. You got pickled cucumber. Yeah. Pickle Rick from Rick and Morty. Yeah, of course. And pickleball. Third. It has made its wow. way up. Wow. Yeah, I think though. So Gene Smith, the coach, by the way, I was coached by one of the top uh pickleballers. He's won many medals. In fact, he just came back from a tournament and won, I believe he said bronze. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's won golds and things. Look at this. It, it was first played in 1965, 
in Bainbridge Island, Washington. So it's an American made sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, really took a long time for it to take off. Yeah, I guess it did. Just uh just uh what what'd you say, sixty five? Yeah. So just sixty some odd years almost. Look at that. It's a almost sixty years. Paddle ball sport similar to a racket a rack R A C Q U E T. Yeah, racket. A racket sport. Racket sport that combines elements of badminton, table tennis, and tennis. Which are our favorite things to play. Mine. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Two or four players use solid paddles made of wood. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or wood composite materials to hit a perforated polymer ball. It's a wiffle ball. Much like a wiffle ball. Yeah, it's a with wiffle ball. 26 to 40 round holes over a net. Yeah. Huh. There's all these rules and stuff, and the scoring is the only thing I don't have down yet. Um, I mean, look, I'm going to have to practice a little more to be in the tournaments. I feel good about it, and I feel like after I played, the first thing in per- person I wanted to tell was Sean because I was like, that's it. If we can mix sexes, we are going to be pickleball champs. So it's going to be a couple of nuts pickleballing. I like that. Yeah, and I want our shirts, and I want uh, uh, teams and sponsors. I love that. So this is, okay, the game started during the summer of 1965 on Bainbridge Island, Washington, at the home of Joel Pritchard, who Mm -hmm. later served in Congress as a lieutenant governor, blah, blah, blah. He and two of his friends, Bill Bell and Barney McCollum, returned from golf. Bill and Barn. Yeah, Bill and Barn returned from golf and found their families bored one Sunday afternoon. They attempted to set up a badminton, but no one could find the shuttlecock. So they did this. Yeah. They improvised with a perforated plastic ball. From Wiffle Ball. Lowered the badminton net and fabricated paddles of plywood from a nearby shed. Nice. So this is all thanks to lack of... Of a shuttlecock. I love that the family had the family over and they were bored. Right. That to me says everything. Like you have a gathering of your family and you're like, I can't talk to these people. Can I just hit something hard? Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And just make a game out of it, Bill and Barn. Gosh. I can't look at these peeps anymore. Rich people are bored. They are. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Pickleball. Stay. I'm look at. Look out people pickleball's coming i mean if i pick an order now in life it's like cats and pickleball that's second and i don't even have anywhere to play and i'm not even on that list we always we were not always we were um Hmm. walking to the to the optometrist so i could pick up my my um glasses yeah and i was like why don't we start a pickleball place. Pickleball league. No, not a league. Like a place where you could play. Like a place where, well, Because they don't have one here. Did you hear how long my pause was? Yeah. I thought. Yeah, what happened? I think like, shut down. Yeah. It ha- I like, I, guess it I don't know if I missed pickleball for a second. Yeah. I think you did. You were reminiscing for a I was. Second. I did have a couple really great volleys. I mean, and it's called Danks. Oh, man. I was danking left and right. Just dank, 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 dank. Dank? D-A-N-K? No, dank. D I N K. Oh, dink. Okay. Yeah. Dinking around. Dink around. Oh. Um. That sounds like a lot of fun. Maybe one day I'll I'll get to try it out. Well, we probably have to go back to Illinois. Uh, Don't. By the way, never pronounce the S at the end. Me. It's Illinois. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I have stopped correcting people though. Because I, I don't think they believe me. Do people actually say Illinois? Oh my gosh. I can't tell you. That Almost make any everyone sense. that I've come across. That doesn't I, make any sense. I know. But they but they do. They always pronounce that S. Wow. I feel like there's probably people in Illinois who say Illinois. Which is just odd to me. From over there at the at the Finger Lakes Illinois uh pickleball tournament this weekend and uh I tell you what, Bob was really getting getting down there getting ner- dirty girties. There on the pickleball court there, getting that wiffle ball up on over the net there, down at the Finger Lakes here in the Illinois. Am I right? Is okay. That? So, okay. we have a new fun segment, and it's called Things We Hate That People Do. Things We Hate That People Do. 
And yeah. both Sean and I, we haven't discussed what we're going to say. We each pick something today yeah. that we hate that people do. Yeah. So, Sean, you go first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, one thing of Hold many... Hold on. To stop it and then let it be and hit record. That's all you need to it's do. recording. One thing I hate that people do... Mm-hmm. When you're driving, okay, and a lot of people uh, probably can agree with me on this one. When you're driving up a street and someone is about to turn right, you know, to get, you know, onto the same street as you, and there's nobody behind you, and they wait till you get really close to them, and then they turn right in front of you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I cannot stand that not it, only is it dangerous but it's fucking obnoxious and extremely selfish it's an i thought i thought it was an la thing and for the most part it is but remember in illinois it happened once and yeah, i was happens. like what the hell it happens everywhere it happens everywhere i feel like it happens here though all the oh, time everybody's just in their own world like they're staring at you yeah and you're getting closer because you're doing 35. Yeah, the closer you get and the faster you appear to be going, it, that's when they want to pull out in front of you. Is it like this? Like, I see, like, say I'm the driver who's about to turn right out. And I and you're the car coming. Yeah. So I'm looking at you because they're always looking at you. Right at you. Right, right at you. Eye so d- is the mind frame like, oh, I see the guy. Oh, but I'm me. Yeah. And I get to go. Yeah. And I'm entitled as fuck. He can wait. Uh, I got this. And then you turn and it's uh, almost a collide and you got to uh, slam on the brakes. And more than half the time, there's nobody behind me. No one. There's nobody behind me. They could have waited just the extra second. So then I, now I have to, I have to break a little bit. I have to slow down a little bit. And then so, and then sometimes I attempt to go around or get in the next lane. Next thing you know, this son of a bitch is in the next lane right in front of me, just going everywhere. Now, I'd like to think that you know, it's not uh, on purpose. People aren't that vindictive. But I think there are some vindictive people because I do see people staring in their rear view mirror. After. After. Instead of focusing on the road in front of them, they're looking at what's going on behind them. I've had people wave their hands in anger. And right. I'm on the street with no stop sign, no lights, just going my merry way. Mm-hmm. And they cut me off. Yeah. And then they decide to look at me, wave arms, flick off, all these things. And I'm just like, Ugh. are you delusional? Are you in a fantasy world? God, son of Do you a think we're at bitch. Disney World with those tracks in the road you where it just can me, go? Make me so angry. Uh. Oh, there was one. This wasn't this, but this was another thing that, you know, it's similar in the same category. I was coming back. And I was hanging a right onto our street from the the main road, hanging a right to come back down. Um, and the light had turned green, so there was somebody waiting to walk there. So it appeared. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're standing there, and I stop because they obviously have the right of way. They're the pedestrian, so I'm waiting for them to go on the road and start crossing, and then I'll hang my right. Nothing happens. I wait a good five, eight seconds. Still nothing happens. So I slowly start to make my turn. Then they look over and they're like, oh, and then they step into the street. Nice day for a walk. Oh, my gosh. They step into the street like I'm already halfway around the turn and they look at me. Right. This they looked at me like I did something wrong. They look pissed at me in their arms when they're, they're just with that stupid face. Did you roll down oh the window? Oh, my God. I went like, what'd you want me to do? I yelled it to myself in the car. I was like, you weren't moving. What'd you want me to do? I'm not, I am surprised you didn't roll down your window and you say, I hey, have. I am an expert pedestrian because you walk all the time and I almost get hit. I walk everywhere, yes. So, and I know it. I know what happens. Yeah, you're a very cautious driver. You got something weird in your beard. Yeah, what else is new? No, on the side, a little bit more. What else is new? On your right side. What else is new? Nearer the... No. Oh, oh. Okay. Doesn't matter. Nobody could see it. I know. I could see it. So that's what I—that's what I really hate. And there's there's a lot more uh, traffic things and and driving. Well, we'll save those for the yeah, next. Yeah, we'll time. save them. But 
I really don't like it when someone turns in front of you and they wait till you get c- really close to them yeah. to make that decision to turn. And then I especially hate it when there's nobody fucking behind me Heard. and they could have waited that extra three fucking seconds yeah. to make that fucking turn. Fuck that guy. Fuck. Uh, A couple of nuts. Fucking. Uh. Yes. Uh, Ugh, fuck. Don't walk. Uh, fuck. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, I'm gonna God. walk. Fuck. <laughs> Ooh, that curve. Oh, fucking. Uh, oh, that's, okay. Uh, that's that. That was so. a good one. What? So cookie? what do you? What? Okay, Cookie. What's going on? Do you hear that? Is it food time? Cookie. Oh, it's not dinner time. Not at all. They got another hour. Are you sure? What time is it? Five. Five oh six. Okay. I'm sorry, Cookie. No, I have nothing to say to you. Cookie. <laughs> cookie. Oh, gosh, she's so cute. She so talks. So cute, I know. <laughs> she's <laughs> like, why are you podcasting and not <laughs> kitty catting? <laughs> okay. Hey, you, Bethany, what is it that you really hate that people do? The thing that I hate, one of many, that people do is this. And now I'm just going to ask you a question, and then you may or may not further reiterate my hate. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Um I'm going to ask you in and I'm going to throw you off a little bit okay. just to see what you say. All okay. Right. Um how into the cats are you? Like if you were to tell like if you were to give me a a, a number how much do you love our cat? That's I couldn't put it into a number. You love them the most. I'm right? obsessed with them. Okay, so what would be the number that you would give? That there's I don't know. It's in it's infinite. Infinite. Infi- infinite. Okay. Infinite. My so love. So if I were to say, here's your heart, what percentage of your heart do you love the cats? Well, it's I love them with 100% of my heart. Oh, he did it, folks, and that's why I love him. You cannot love anything fully if it's over 100. Oh. You cannot try any harder than 100%. Right. If you are somebody who says, I give it 120%, 110%. I put in 110% on this one. You realize that now the scale completely changes from 1 to 100 to 1 to 1,000. Right. And you are now 890% not into what you just right. said you're into. It's true. It is such a pet peeve of mine yeah. that if I ask you a fucking question, how much do you like something, and you say anything over the whole of it, right. the 100% of it, I cannot be friends with you. I can't even look at you. Bye-bye. So let me ask you, and I want you to say it. I want you to say 110 or something stupid okay, like that. Okay, got like it. A really stupid thing that people say. So how hard did you try in that uh, track and field event that you did the other day? 110%. Well, that's not very much now, is it? Uh, what are you talking about? I said 100% plus 10. That doesn't make any fucking sense, idiot. It certainly doesn't. Because like I said, you subtract that from 1,000 and that gives you 890% now that is left over. For instance, if you have a whole body and you say, I'm trying so hard, I'm going to give an arm and a leg to it. That's that's like 50% of your body, right? Mm, not, no, yeah. That's I just mean like yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, I'm working it. an arm and a leg, yeah. whatever, right? So yeah. we get that analogy. But if you're like, I'm giving it 110%, that means a whole body plus one arm. All right. How uh, That doesn't make any sense. You can't possibly pull another arm uh-uh. out of yourself. No, you can't. Uh, Although, it's just hey, I did see this program once where somebody had a uh, conjoined twin growing inside of them. Just something to think about. It's still inside of them, which means they are part of the whole, which is 100%. Right. In other words, if they took the conjoined twin out of them, they'd be 92%, and that little twinny thing would be eight. Right. Okay? I can't. I don't. I, yeah. No argument there. I hate Here's that, Here's another too. one. Here's another one. On a scale of one to ten, how pretty am I? You're ten. Thank you. 
Because if homeboy wanted to exaggerate and say 11, like some of you do, Uh that would mean I am then uh, 89 89 points. You're not that pretty is what that means. That's what that means. It means you're barely... 10 is as high as you go. I gave you the fucking scale. Answer the fucking question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how pretty am I? 10 is best. Anything other than that over 10... You're insulting my prettiness. Yeah. And I couldn't uh, agree look, more. baby, if you said 11, I would have no inclination to want to put my mouth to your penis. Oh, well. You are a 10, baby. A big fat solid to to Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Go 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 go. Baby, I'm gonna curl. Uh, you're ten. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're so funny. Oh man, well, I like that. That's fun. Yeah. What? Uh, but I, do you see? I, hate that. I I mean, I hate that people do that, and a lot of people <sighs> do that. God, I really wish people would teach that in school. I wish teachers would focus up. Just give a hundred percent, guys. Just show them a pie. If you truly gave a hundred percent. That's fucking Full. amazing. That's um, I mean, that first of all, you're best. probably lying. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. But it's way better than 110%, just so you guys know. It's a lie. Because I barely can believe you when you say 100%. So when you say over, I'm just yeah. like, Ugh, you're one of those exaggerators who uh, really just phoned it in and called a buddy and had a open textbook while you took a test. Like, yeah. come on. I can't with you. Mm. Um. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, what else did we want to do? That was great. By the way, that was things people do that we hate. We hate. Wait, pop? wait. Things that we hate people do. People do. Is that how you say that? Things. These are things that we hate that people do. These are the things people do that we hate. Here's some things that people <laughs> do that we hate. Hey. People do things that we hate. Yeah, that's good. Here are some. Yeah. Here's something I wanted to ask you about. And it weighs on my mind probably more than it should. Okay. I'm intrigued. What the fuck happened to Bruce Willis? What the fuck happened to Bruce Willis? <laughs> I can't what even. What the fuck happened to Bruce Willis? I had a visceral reaction to that because I just think, <laughs> oh I think God. Die Hard, which is one of my favorite oh, movies of all time. McLean. It's in my top 50 movies McLean. of all time. I mean, just, uh, you can't get any better. Uh, and, and there's several after that that we can name, right? But the last what 15 movies we've seen him do he's made it's just shit balls and it sucks because it's now comparable and exceeded in my opinion nicholas cage who oh, nicholas is cage. one of my favorite actors i'm a die hard cage head oh die hard oh cage. shit i didn't even <gasps> what mean that that's crazy happened die hard cage, cage head yeah and he's made some real stinkers but we have a new king stinker in the house no no because first of all Nicholas Cage has far surpassed and redeemed himself yeah. from the stinker pinker. Yeah. So agreed. And now what's interesting is Bruce Willis's head looks like the stinker pinker. Yeah, it does. Um, uh, I'm going to pull up some of his IMDb because I think I it's have worthy. It. I mean, I have it right here. Oh, nice. Okay, great. So he's got, you know, 140 credits. He's got a ton of shit in post-production, including another Die Hard film, which they're fun. You oh, know? my God. I, I do love the first, like, three. But it's like, when do you stop? Why that? would you stop? You get paid so much from them. Understandable. Yeah, but it's like, oh, my God. That's like somebody saying, like you know what? I'm sti- I know, but, honey, you have to understand as an actor or something like that. That's like somebody going, you know what? You want to be in the 20th Star Wars movie? Yeah. Um, yes. You just say yes. Right. Because... Those type of, uh, what would you call those? What are those called again? I can't think of it. What? When you get a lot of the same thing. Movies, like, uh, not Franchise. Fr- when you can get into a franchise, yeah. forget, especially a sci-fi franchise. I know we're talking about Die Hard, but like. Oh, we're talking about Bruce Willis. It, and it's really crazy because I'm looking at his 
his IMDb, and it's Why like it let me pull it up. I don't know, but it's like banger after banger after banger. I mean, Moonrise Kingdom, Expendables, Looper, and then he did Fire with Fire, which I don't know what that was. But then A Good Day to Die Hard, G.I. Joe, Red Two, Sin City Two, Rock the Casbah, and then there's just can I tell you what? There's like these random ass ones, and what really brought me to this is because you see them pop up a lot on the Netflix and the Hulu's. You see like these random ass Bruce Willis movies, and then of course we're gonna fucking click on it. We're gonna watch the Bruce Willis movies because we're Bruno fans. We dig Bruno, and he's handsome, and he he, he who's gets Bruno? Bruce Willis. Oh yeah yeah. He put out an album <laughs> called The Return of Bruno in the '80s. He's he plays a saxophone. Oh shit, he's like original Bruno, not Mars. Right. He plays oh, a saxophone. Damn. I wonder if is you would Bruno Mars his real name Bruce? I don't know. Oh, that would be interesting. You would hate it though because he's a saxophone player. Oh yeah, I definitely would hate it anyways because he's not a singer. Um The or, one that really did it though was he made a movie with Michael Cheeklace from Oh God the Shield, Ten Minutes Gone. Which we always thought like, oh my God, that would be fucking amazing. Right, because we just got Michael, off the shield. Yeah, if Michael Cheeklace and fucking Bruce Willis were in a movie, that would be Epic, and it it happened. Guys, if you went back to our S.H.I.E.L.D. episode where we chuck it or fuck it, yeah. which, by the way, I guess we're chucking or fucking Bruce Willis right now, but it, it, we literally even say, like, Michael Chiklis is the tiny, stumpier version, and yeah. I mean no harm to that because I love we me love some Michael Chiklis. Uh, uh, but he's like, what would you call him? His stand-in. He's it, like Bruce Willis' he stand-in. He could be his stand-in or he would be his. But he wouldn't get the job because he's like five inches shorter. Yes, our cats are about to really oh go into God. play mode, which is adorable. Now, I think I figured out why. Why? Bruce Willis is the stinker now. I, why? It was It was him saying yes to Lala Kent, mm. the girl from Vanderpump Rules, yeah. producer. He's fucking ruining... Bruce, what's his name? Russell? I don't know. Russell. But, but he's made a few movies. Look and, up his name. It's Russell something. But it's Oh, like wait. You know what? Ten minutes gone. He was the producer on this. I'll right. tell you right now because I'm already there. It's uh, funny because, uh, yeah, we watched that movie with Michael Cheeklace. And you can tell Bruce Willis was like did ten, like one day of filming, maybe ten hours of filming. Oh, yeah. They the had him most. in the. Oh, Randall. It's Randall Emmett. All right, so anything that Randall Emmett is connected to that also has Bruce Willis, it is going to be a snooze awful fest. All right, yeah. so uh, let's pull up some filmography here on him that we can see on Bruce. On Bruce. All right, so I see Boss Level. I'm gonna assume. No, that was good. We like that. Oh, he produced that, so good on him. That was with the guy from. Uh, oh. From the Purge. Hard kill. That was another one we oh had to God, stop. Oh, God, we couldn't even get through that. We could not get through it. Force of nature. And by the way, Lala does little little cameos right. in Right. The one, la okay, guys, we were watching the Michael Chiklis one, 10 minutes gone, okay? And Lala, out of nowhere, comes into a scene and starts yelling during a machine gun fight. What are you guys doing out so there? So unnecessary. Uh, what was the other line like? There's people there's in here. There's families in here. When can we get out of here? When there's a full-on <laughs> full shootout like, da, da, happening da, 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 in the parking lot. Makes no sense. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Uh, anyways, these movies are just it's fucking turds. It's just like, turds. I, but why? Like, what? Money. The fuck? It can't be that much money. These movies that he's made, and recently he's made some huge movies, and it's just like, I mean, he's got, he had downtime. Why does he do that though? It it looks awful. Well, don't you, as an actor, like, not want to have that on your resume? I guess. Uh, I guess it doesn't. He's matter. got a hundred and forty things or whatever. He What's the number on his a thing? One hundred and forty. Of course he does. He, he spends, spends a lot. A lot. He's a single. Is he single still? I don't know. He's a little gigolo. Uh, but yeah, know. and he's got lots of girls, lots of daughters. So, of course, he's spending a lot. Yeah, but they're all doing their own thing, I feel like. Oh, honey, they're doing their own thing on their dime. On daddy's dime. And Demi's dime. Da oh, Daddy Demi. and Demi. Demi. Um, I, I honestly what happened couldn't tell you because, you know, when you're working on a film or a TV show, no matter who you are, whether you're cast, crew, you're just watching – there's a moment in the first few days where you're like, oh, this is going to suck. Or you're like, this is going to be really good. 
Yeah. Every one of those that we just said. What about when you read the script and you're like, this is uh, fucking Excuse st- me. <laughs> Sorry. What about I when just drink water. Yeah. Because <laughs> water makes you burp. <laughs> you read the script and you're just like, what is this piece of fucking shit? Bruce, yeah. come on, man. Bruce, we're old buds. You're going to come over for some barbecue, right? Bruce, here. check out the script I got here, man. It's, it's about a cop who goes rogue and, you know, goes you, on a bank heist. Do you know what I think? I don't even think Bruce Willis reads his own scripts anymore. Yeah, it didn't seem like he had much of a... And it also actually didn't seem like he had much of a script. It seemed like he was just like, where's the diamonds? All right. And then he was by got this, em. like clear board that he was looking at just cu- oh he also God. just stayed in two places he peered out a window when he talked and he also looked at this like whiteboard that was a clear board and yeah he didn't have many i i i just i don't understand i mean he's got <laughs> he's got 2021 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 things in the works in post production right now. He's filming multiple things at the same time. These all look like they're going to be shitty. All of but, them. But but he made 15 mil minimum. Minimum. You think he's getting a mil a piece. Honey. There's a new Honey. Do you know why Die Hard is up so high the budgets? Because of him. Oh yeah, he's very right. charismatic and charming when he's got a good director. But boy oh boy when he doesn't get directed, let what me tell the... you. <laughs> Fuck, you know what's funny? I'm going to say this. Let's. I'm going to end on this. I give so much props to Sean in, when I met Sean because he's truly shown me the importance. Oh, hi, baby. Hey, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Go on yeah. about me. No, no, no. Back to me. Back oh, to me. She's yawning. Hey, 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 hey. Back to me. Um. Yes. Anyways, I don't remember what I was hey, saying. Hey, hey. You're welcome. When I got to direct my own thing. Like, I directed a comedy thing, which is comedy is what I do. But when I got to express myself through a horror and, like, use the camera. Which you can go search on YouTube and Vimeo. It's called Grant Ba, The Horror, is written and directed by Bethany Dwyer, and it is produced by Sean Fetterman. And not only that, but Sean Fetterman wrote, composed, performed the score. Just okay, saying. I also am in Just it, saying. but whatever. Oh yes, uh, and Bethany is is and in. And so I am I. If you keep your eyes open, it. you'll see me. Oh yeah, there's an accidental shot where you will see Sean. But go on. Uh, anyways, I don't know if everybody out there, anybody out there, was the same as me. But if you are, and you're like, I don't know, directors, I don't get it. I urge you to look up some of your favorite movies. And for instance, I love horror, so I started looking. At, that's what how I learned because Sean and I love horrors and then he would start talking about the director after and being like oh I love his style on this and of course I notice the style and I I love it but I never equated it to the director and I know that sounds really naive and even working with directors and mostly on TV you lose that you like unless you're the one who who directs the pilot or is a story uh, or the the showrunner or something like that you don't really have the creative side but anyways so bruce is working with some really some shitty directors really shitty directors because he's wonderful when he's directed well it's because he's really bad in these movies and oh but God, also the writing is just horrific i mean there's so bad he obviously doesn't care and he's there to get yeah. a paycheck i'm assuming yeah, maybe of course we'll, he is we'll get him on here one day but i mean what happened to you bruce bruno yeah it's... i love you man and i you know I hope you. But you know stop. what's funny? I don't have the love for him that I do of Nicolas Cage. So, like for oh instance, God, no. if someone were to say something poor about Bruce Willis, I'd be like, "Yeah, the last five things I saw him in sucked." Right. But if you say that about Nick Cage, I'm gonna throw up some hands. You I'm gonna take off earrings that I don't even wear. That's right. I'm gonna throw up some hands. You keep his name out of your mouth. Yeah. I think, I think we should stop there because we could dedicate an entire show to Nick Cage. So let's just say this: we're gonna leave you on this as a teaser. Yeah. Just know that in the future, yeah, there will definitely be a time on a Wednesday when you tune in and another pod is up there yeah. of a couple of nuts talking that it is fully 100 percent dedicated to Nick Cage. It's going to be a hour. whole cage episode. It's the going to be head. a wrestling cage match oh my God. in our heads about the beauty of Nick Cage. I love it. 
just yeah, pile yeah, yeah, driving yeah, yeah, yeah. it in of how epically wonderful he is. He's philanthropic. I can I, I'm not uh, even gonna stop. 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 We just we gotta, gotta we gotta say goodbye. He deserves more time than this. We both have to just hand job ourselves to Nick Cage after this and just and just lose ourselves. Yeah. So let's do that so we can get to spanking our own bodies. Yeah. I feel really, really good about what we got done here today. I feel like we accomplished a lot. And I know that you listeners feel the same. We know that you were touched in certain ways and we were glad to be the vehicle in which ran you over. Yes, we we're glad to touch you. To all over. So, uh, until and next week. What? Can I feel like we touched them today. Like if I were going to pick like a, a gentle tickle. Okay. Yeah. A little tickle. A little tickle. Tickle. A little tickle to you today. Thanks for letting us tickle you today, everybody. Yeah, tickle and tickle. And uh, until next time, uh, stay nutty, everybody. Bye for now. Campses. Bethany, Bethany, and Sean, and Sean, we are a couple of nuts, talking.